I find when there's a lot going on that sometimes it's good just to take a moment to breathe. So I'm going to invite you to do that. Just take a deep cleansing breath. And for a moment, we're just going to be still. We're just going to be quiet. And in this quietness, we are remembering the deep intent why we're here in the first place. It's so easy to get caught up in the logistics and the planning that we forget what we're really doing. So we remember in this moment that we come here to uplift. We come here as a single human family. We come here to empower. We come here to remind people of their humanity. We come here to serve and to give. We come to level the playing field. We come here in a state of absolute cooperation. We're not competing for funds here. One service is not more important than another. We need it all. And I say thank you. I say thank you to each individual who's shown up here. I say thank you for the vision of this gathering. And I am knowing that each and every person here is blessed by the work that they do. I know that each and every person who walks through these doors finds whatever it is that they need. And oh, we are so grateful. And I would be remiss at this moment if I didn't say something that's beyond Santa Cruz. I love that bumper sticker, think globally and act locally. And because of so many disasters and things all over the world, there are so many people facing homelessness. And I'm knowing in this moment right now that the spirit of graciousness that happens right here in Santa Cruz sweeps all over the world. It's possible if we all come together. So we begin now with open arms and open hearts. And I invite you to join with me in a chant that we do at our what we call baby blessings. I actually got this from Don Iglesias when I used to be a consultant for the Santa Cruz School District and he was at um, De La Viega School. It was a sign on his wall that said, yes you can, I believe in you, and I'm never giving up on you. Yes you can, I believe in you, and I am never giving up on you. And that is the message that we have for each and every person who walks through these doors today. Can you say that with me three times? Yes you can, I believe in you, and I am never ever giving up on you. Again, yes you can, I believe in you, and I am never ever giving up on you. One more time like you mean it, yes you can, I believe in you, and I am never ever giving up on you. Let the healing begin. We're going to open the doors pretty soon. Uh, we want to make sure that people aren't waiting outside. I just want to say thank you guys so much. Um, we have double the volunteers that we had last year that signed up for the project. And now we're gonna, just going to get started. It's ready to go. So follow your leads. And thank you, agencies, for being on your toes. It's time to get started. Deborah Johnson was just so moving. And uh, you know, I think it's just a really great way to start the day. It's just really um, important to think about why we're really here, um, you know, which is really to, to help people make a difference in their lives. It's just very touching to me that all these people come in one day and really um, give of themselves and and make a difference. Everybody, everybody's on the same team today. You know, there's no difference between you and me and them and us. It's it, it's uh, it's us together. Project Homeless Connect started, um, you know, as a smaller. Uh, event that just kept growing because once the idea got out about what we were doing, uh, people started actually calling us wanting to participate in the event. Um, and next thing you know, we've got the Civic full inside and out. And so the idea behind the event is that, you know, we really want to provide services in one place. So that's the, the primary goal is that we bring everything together in one place so that you can get a bunch of stuff done in one day. So that's, that's kind of the the primary mission is to be efficient and effective and get a lot done. Um, you know, because one of the things is that for 
you know, someone that doesn't have a car or, or public have access to public transportation, it's really difficult to go from one place to another. Um, and also you might need paperwork from one place and then have to go get another and, you know, it's just overwhelming and daunting and very frustrating. So here we have everything in one place. A lot of the services are housing and employment and things like that, but then we also have like quality of life services. We have, you know, hot meal, massage, you know, veterinary care for people's pets. Um, so really there's just a full range. This year we've added a laundry service. So, you know, you just think about how, how is someone gonna get a job if they don't have clean clothes? You know, we have haircuts. How is someone gonna get a, get a job, you know, if they don't have, you know, their haircut and they're not clean? So, so really all of these things are very necessary. Uh, some more than others. My name is Matt Nathanson. I'm a nurse with the Homeless Persons Health Project and we work with people every day who are homeless to help them access medical care um, and services to improve their health um, and we're here today as part of this larger community effort to reach out to people who are homeless. We're offering medical screenings today by um, nursing and medical staff we're doing diabetes screenings and blood, high blood pressure screenings. Um, also coordinating with dentists, the community dental clinic on dental care. Um, and along with doing the care today here, we several clinics in the community have opened up slots in their medical clinics. Um, if somebody needs sort of a, a full appointment and a full exam, they can go to the Women's Health Center or to the Planned Parenthood Westside Clinic here downtown or to our clinic over at Coral Street. Um, we'll also be helping people with follow-up medical care in the future because it's the, the point of an event like today is to reach out to people but really medical care is an ongoing service that people need so a lot of what we're trying to do is make that connection so people have a permanent medical home. So far today I've been helped out quite a bit. I had a pair of reading glasses that broke and they supplied me with some new reading glasses. Uh, they've got several other events going on out here. We've got behavioral health services for those who need it. We've got massage services over here which is absolutely wonderful. Dental services. We've got a wide array of services for the homeless. The community has really come together today on this thing and has done a wonderful job of taking care of those with needs. Uh, my wife and I are still looking for affordable housing and we're running into some barricades on that but because of me being in a wheelchair and her being visually impaired it's making it very hard but hopefully something on that will turn up as well. I'm here today to um, you know for to take uh, advantage of the resources that are available here um, for me. Um, dental, you know, dental screening, um, glasses are in desperate need for me, um, some clothing obviously. I'm just really grateful that um, that the community provides this. I've been homeless for a while so and I'm you know I am staying at a shelter and um, you know like a lot of people we've lost everything, lost a lot you know so and uh, and I just hope this will be you know this this will definitely be beneficial for me. Good things do happen when, when people try, when, when people see that people want to try to help themselves, they want to help, you know, they, they want to help you. I hope to get some help to get my dog back because I have chronic seizures and the dog alerts me when I have a seizure. He's a show dog, you know, and he's not a deadly dog or hurt anybody, you know, and he's not a pit bull and he's got paperwork. I just got him. Uh, he, I, was, I was put in a hospital yesterday in Watsonville Hospital for seizures, and the dog wasn't a, a loose. He was hooked to me, and so I just want my dog back. We're representing the Gemma um, Transitional Housing for women that were incarcerated and came out and had nowhere to go. Um, we're actually current residents right now at the Gemma at the Gemma House. There's a um, three-month day program that the girls that are incarcerated for minimum security, Blaine Street, that go out three days a week and um, do workshops and people volunteer and present like different learning stuff to the girls so they'll be educated and um, ready to come out from being sentenced. Uh, you can be homeless and join the day program. The day program is what actually um, gets you into the Gemma House um, and um, it's an 18 month program. It's for life skills. Um, it's also um, offers uh, 12 steps. In the house we actually we find a job. We go in, we find a job. It's an 18 month program. Um, 
before we find a job, we have re certain requirements, volunteering inside, outside, job search, um, meetings, different things to kind of get ourselves set up to get into the world. School. And then when we, yeah, schooling is definitely a requirement. Um, when we find a job, they actually take 50% of our check, 30% goes to savings for us when we transition out for a place to live, and 20% goes to give back to the Gemma House. There are grants HPRP. where HPRP, which will match whatever we have saved, so when we move out, we have the money to to get state to transition out yeah. yes Gemma has saved my life I've been there for over a year I came from prison there was a bed open um, before I went to prison fighting my case I went through the day program which gave me the support I needed to stay connected with while I was serving my time so Gemma has saved my life um, I'm now going to school I work I've I've held a job for a year I um, want to definitely give back to other alcoholics and addicts in the community. I'm, I'm um, beginning my human services at Cabrillo College. My name is Veronica and I also came from Blaine Street. I've been um, there for about nine months, clean and sober, 11, um, working. It saved my life. It's given me a life that I never knew I can have. Hi, we're with Homeless Services Center located on the corner of Highway 1 and Highway 9. We're here today with applications for our 30-day shelter with information about the Rebelly Family Shelter for Paige Smith Community House, which is an 18-month transitional housing program, and a sheet that describes all of the services on our campus. We also have our direct services coordinator, Jen, here, who heads up all of the daily activities. So um, everything that goes on on our campus is represented on this table. So there are applications for the 30-day shelter, which is the Paul Lee Loft. There is a waiting list for both men and women. Valerie is going to put people on the waiting list for the Rebelly Family Shelter. We have information for the 18-month transitional housing program about how to go about getting on their waiting list. And then the daily services that we serve every day are open Monday through Friday. Um, we have breakfast at 8 a.m. seven days a week and dinner at 4 p.m. seven days a week. Um, campus is open to anyone who needs to use um, bathroom facilities 24-7. We have showers seven days a week from 8 to 4. Hi, my name is Susie Humbert. I'm a counselor at the River Street Shelter. and We are providing a mailing station uh, for people to send out letters to their loved ones and uh, just reconnect and uh, find out some information about River Street Shelter. We're on uh, Coral Street right behind the uh, family shelter and we're a 30-day stay shelter. Hopefully we can help them transition into uh, longer term transitional housing and, uh, and work with you know whoever we can to help provide that. I've been um, around the shelter um, quite a quite a while and I've used many other services there practically just about all of them and I'm a product of that shelter. The shelter has brought me through mental health and stabilized me to the point where I could take care of myself. The shelter isn't just a place where homeless people gather out and, you know, shoot the crap. People there are real, some of them are really trying to change their lives. Hi, my name is Denise Acosta. I'm with the Salvation Army, and we are here today to provide phone cards for long distance or local calls, and also clothing vouchers to be used at our thrift store. And we are here to provide support and referrals. I picked up a good Salvation Army clothing voucher, and I have when I got a nice, beautiful massage right here, which is very delightful. And also, we have all the other resources that are here for people like us. We just need a little stronger, a little stronger, you know, thought on our behalf. But otherwise, it's all here. I even got a sh uh, haircut and a shampoo. Bless my soul. Uh, my name is Lisa, and I'm uh, Kathy. We uh, provide services for food stamps, Medi-Cal, general assistance, CalWORKs, Cal works. and we're here today to hopefully reach out to the homeless um, population that, do, that don't make it to our office, right? and also to see what other resources are out there, which there seems to be a lot of great resources for homeless clients so that we can provide referrals. 
provide referrals to these other agencies and, and they can get to know us and we can get to know them. A lot of people camp out, they don't have the resources. Um, we offer bus passes to clients for their appointments at the office. It is definitely hard for them, especially in, in bad weather like we've had lately. And when we have 8 o'clock appointments, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so yeah, it's hard for them. Hi, I'm Renee Robison. I'm with the Homeless Persons Health Project, and I'm here at um, Project Homeless Connect um, to help folks get birth certificates. Ever since um, the um, uh, September 11th, um, it's been a lot harder to get birth certificates, and it's kind of, you need um, a photo ID to get a birth certificate, but if you don't have a birth certificate, you can't get a photo ID, so we're just, we have a list of all the requirements from all of the states. We have some funding from the United Way to help people afford um, to order their new birth certificates, but it's a process. It takes a while. HPHP, or Homeless Persons Health Project, is also doing health screenings on the stage, so we have a big presence here. Hi, I'm Claire. I'm a nursing student here at the Homeless Connect Project, and I feel fortunate to be here helping the needy with blood pressure measuring and blood glucose tests and we're triaging them to other healthcare providers, hopefully serve them well today. Just came down to the, uh, the project here and uh, checking out the, uh, what they have to offer. They have some great spaghetti right now and uh, some massages, foot care, a little bit of everything. It's a really great deal. There's a lot of people and sun's coming out and it's a great day to be here. We're the Homeless Garden Project and we've been around for 20 years now working with homeless individuals and our main focus is job training and transitional employment. So we offer a two-year program where homeless individuals can work on an organic farm and learn how to grow vegetables and flowers and strawberries and at the same time be able to gain stability in their life, um, earn a small income and uh, be able to then take next steps to move on to that next goal in their life. We're actually hiring for um, five positions for this next year, and so we're interested in individuals that want a chance to work and be outside and learn about um, what it's like to farm. And we also offer volunteer opportunities, so if you don't get a job per se, there's still opportunities to come work on a farm to be able to eat really good food um, and have a chance to um, just interact with some amazing people from the community. Hi, so we're with Walnut Avenue Women's Center and we're here today to show the people our five core services that we offer. Uh, those are family literacy, even start, domestic violence services, the youth department, and our community and resource development. So we're here today really just to explain our services to the people and let them know um, the variety of services that we have available to them um, so that hopefully we can really just spread knowledge about how many uh, services we do offer here at the Walnut Avenue Women's Center. Um, I'm an escort uh, and I help the clients uh, find the different services that they're they would like to partake in and um, I just guide them around the venue. So far I've, I've helped three people. Um, um, I've helped them with DMV Dental where you have to sign up for an interview and now foot washing and laundry. Just got my feet washed and uh, it, they have HIV testing and the laund I'm doing the laundry thing. It's, uh, it's actually a good help been homeless since I was about 12 and 10 of those years were here in Santa Cruz. Hi, I'm Donna Lua and we're here at the Civic Auditorium doing the laundry facilities and um, we were guesstimating that we would be uh, washing about 50 loads of laundry and we haven't quite hit that target yet. We've got people out there um, soliciting laundry <laughs> laundry people for us and so hopefully we'll be getting a little bit more busier this as the time goes by and we're taking laundry till up to around two o'clock so they get it back the same day the laundromat over on Vanessa and Mission has agreed to allow us to use their laundromat and which was very generous and um, we're just having a great time today we've got um, several people in there now escorting but also 
plug in the laundry facility. This is the first year that they've actually done the laundry, and so they don't know, um, it, it isn't well known yet. But next year, hopefully, it'll take off and be a lot popular. We had quite a few people come by, and they didn't know that we were doing laundry today, so they didn't bring their laundry with them, and so they can't... Um, get it done. Oh, hello, my name is Noemi Macias. I'm with the Santa Cruz County Office of Education and the Students in Transition program where we offer services for homeless students who need assistance in immediate enrollment in a public education K through 12. We provide services such as backpacks and school supplies, tutoring and bus passes. Last year that we were here there were around 20 families that we provided assistance with in enrolling their children that hadn't been enrolled. At Community Connection we do all sorts of employment services including pre-employment where we help people make sure they have references, their ID that they may need, uh, gather their resources, help with applications, resumes, interviewing. We work, uh, Career Services works with the Department of Rehab, so people sign up for their services and work also with us. We're with the Community Action Board Shelter Project's voicemail program. What we're doing here is, well we did it last year too, is we're setting up voicemail services for folks that don't have communication and people tend to forget how important having communication can be. People use it to make appointments with prospective employers and, and uh, landlords, doctor's appointments, social workers, and uh, just families. In some cases, this is the only connection some folks have to the rest of the world. In our office, it's uh, sitting on a desk next to my computer, and it now has about 250 active users. Hi there, my name's Paul Hempstead. I'm volunteering from the Bike Church for Project Homeless Connect today. Um, we're repairing people's bikes um, because the homeless rely mostly on their bikes um, to get around, so it's kind of important to them. So we're glad to be of service. We can handle basic repairs, nothing too um, in-depth. Um, but yeah, they just leave them here for about a half hour while we work on them. Um, and we get what we can done. This guy has no brakes on his bike, so um, we had to put at least one on before we could let him go. We got more brake adjustments, some flat tires, bottom bracket overhauls. We're kind of just doing what we can to get people back on the road. Hi, my name is Wendy and I'm an instructor at Twin Lakes College of the Healing Arts. And we're here as an organization offering as much uh, outreach that we can to the community. This event in particular holds uh, very close to us because we really feel that we um, reach a lot a lot of people that um, don't get the opportunity to have healthy touch and that is our goal to um, be able to share um, safe and healthy touch and give them a little bit of um, our intention which is love and caring for them and showing them that we care for them. Hi, this is uh, really great. Thanks for everybody showing up. Uh, this really does make a, a big difference even though it might seem like a little for some but it's a lot and it really helps us in our in our faith in humanity. Yeah, our church. 